Hello, I'm Lucy Moog and I am the Democratic Committee person from the 43rd Board. And I'd like to welcome you to the 80, the Cook County Democratic Party's podcast about our organization, its candidates and our, its leaders. So today we are currently interviewing the party's endorsed candidates for the June 28th, 2022 primary. So you can hear more about their backgrounds and unique stories. And today I am super excited to welcome Teresa Flynn, who is running for Metropolitan Water Reclamation District. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Committee Woman Lucy Moog, to uh, invite me to the show today. I'm grateful to have the time to let voters know who I am and what I'm about. Awesome. So how is the campaign going? Gangbusters in a positive way. Um, very excited. Uh, lots of great endorsements coming my way. But most importantly, we need those endorsements mean nothing unless we get voters to the polls. So that's really what I've been doing the last few days is more door knocking, hitting some train stations and letting voters know that, yes, there is a uh, election June 28th, as odd as that may be. Yes, I have encountered a little bit of troubles along the way about that. We really need to educate people that early voting is happening and available and that it will be coming to the communities. June 13th. Um, so hopefully, hopefully people between early voting and vote by mail, we will have really good turnout. Um, so tell me a little bit, tell everybody a little bit about yourself. I know you are currently in your third term as a trustee in the village of Crestwood. Why are you running for water rec commissioner? Well, once upon a time, I actually worked for the Water Reclamation District. I worked out at the Calumet plant, so that was in the far Southlands. And what I did was I, I worked under pollution control as well as in the laboratory. So when you had metal finishers and oil refineries out in that area, I was sent out into the field to gather their outfall, their discharge, to ensure that they were in compliance with the EPA, which is very important in protecting our waterways, which is the mission of the district, protecting our waterways and also on flood mitigation. Um, I actually only became interested in politics because of an environmental drinking water scandal that we had in our village about 14 years ago. They were commingling a contaminated well. The known carcinogen was um, vinyl chloride, and they were commingling that with Chicago purchased water. And it wasn't because the folks were sinister or they wanted to do harm. What it was was an infrastructure issue. We were leaking hundreds of thousands of dollars of purchased Chicago water, and it would just be a lot easier on the pocketbook if they used these two water sources together to distribute amongst residents. So long story short, that resulted in $15 million in lawsuits, 22 felony counts on two public officials, and the only rainbow that came out of that was legislation changed in Springfield on how we charge people that handle our public records. So. As a mom, I felt I only had two choices, either to move my family out of that area or to dig my heels in and become part of local government. I chose to dig in. So with the help of my husband and a lot of great friends and family, we had a grassroots door knocking campaign and I ran as the angry mom, the angry taxpayer, the angry consumer, and became the first woman on that board and now I'm the longest serving woman on that board. And since being on that board, I've actually partnered with my board and the Army Corps of Engineers, as well as the MWRD on flood mitigation projects, which is actually what the district does as well. That's what they're tasked with is, is flood control. So we were successful in taking over 150 homes out of a floodplain the first go around. And just last week with Commissioner Scarapolis, she's on my slate, um, and uh, all the rest of the commissioners, we signed on to another intergovernment agreement to remove 83 homes from a floodplain. So uh, I'm not reaching for an office I know nothing about. I've been a fan of the agency since high school when I actually cleaned offices there as a summer job. So it's an easy tale to tell when it's the truth. Um, and hopefully I'm the right candidate for the job. That's awesome. I, am, I have served the role as the angry mom as an activist too. And it really is... Um, motivating from within and it um, is a really good story to bring other people in with you to for your mission um, because safety of our you know for our families is we feel it in the heart and in the gut and you know there's it's like there's nothing you can really do to stop an angry mom. <laughs> My husband's hoping I could be a little less angry these days but you know until June 28th he's got to deal with it. Yeah. 
So what would be your top um, priority? Like what do you, well, if no, you were elected? Sure. Um, the district is the second largest landowner in the state. And actually in the village of Crestwood, we recognize that by uh, actually taking over the lease of the land that aligns the 127th and Calstag Road, if you're in that area at all. Lots of MWRD property sits in our town. A lot of it was derelict. And I believe that policing these properties is very important. There was a lot of dumping on that site. And I think repurposing these properties, not necessarily for development, although we have taken on some commercial development, which in turn provides a revenue stream for the MWRD and also sales tax revenue for our town. So it's a win-win and plus there's the job creation. But I also think there's a lot of room to develop more green space or um, uh, uh, park space for our residents using MWRD property for a very small fee. I think it's like a $10 uh, annual fee to the, to the MWRD, but repurposing district property would be probably my number one and policing those properties to ensure that they're clean and they're ready to take on all the heavy rainfalls that are happening at much shorter intervals. Awesome. Well, so I'm sure most people know, but Cook County is one of the largest counties in the country. It, it is it makes it what it is comprised of 50 wards and 30 townships. So I know you've been hustling. I've seen you all over the city, <laughs> and I know you're in the suburban areas too, campaigning. How many miles have you put on your car in the past? Uh, I'm I'm measuring it by about five oil changes, a brand new set of tires because I look good in new tires, uh, and the last thing my engine just went. Uh, last week. So I was driving a rental car from post to pillar. Uh, so the engine went. So that's testimony to what I've been doing to my car. Although full disclosure, the engine was covered under warranty, but I, I've really been hitting the road hard. It's from Barrington to Lamont. Plus, like you said, all 50 wards, you know, lots of communities trying to put a footprint. I know I can't do it all, but I've certainly made a solid attempt in putting a footprint everywhere I go. Yeah. And so what has been one of your favorite campaign events that you that you got to attend? Uh, definitely Jan Schakowsky's uh, Power Lunch. That was amazing. Listening to Nancy Pelosi and Val Demings get me fired up about being a Democrat and uh, excited about getting people to the polls, excited to run for the right reasons, encouraging people to run. I, I think it was a really uplifting uh, luncheon. That was my favorite event. That's awesome. I was there. It was amazing. There was tremendous energy in the room. A thousand people, mostly women. Um, I think Jan is like the ultimate sort of angry mom who entered politics yeah. for the same kind of reason to make her community better um, for her kids with the expiration date on food, which didn't just only oh, affect. Amazing. Yeah. Um, I really thought that I, I have said it to Congressman uh, Kelly before that I really think their message, I've heard Vale Deming speak with uh, Congresswoman Kelly before. I really think they should take that show on the road and be on college campuses in, in doing this for women all across the nation. I think it's so powerful and so excitable. Yeah. I also love that Jan sort of highlights all these other people who are running. It's like less about her and it's more about introducing Definitely. us to candidates in Illinois who are in districts at risk, but then also, you know, um, Congresswoman Demings, who's running for the Senate. And she had that the woman from Iowa, I can't remember her name right now, but she was amazing, who's running in the congressional district that was um, Abby Finkenhauer's, um, the woman who was the, um, she was a newscaster. And then she took on, she too took on like mental health issues in her community and ran for school board and then for state Senate and now is running for Congress. Um, good, well, interesting. Okay, so tell me a little bit about your family and are you guys sports fans and how do you spend your time with your yeah. family? I know your kids are older now, but you can tell us a little snapshot of before and then maybe now. Um, let's see, I'm uh, a daughter of Irish immigrants uh, that came out here in the early 60s. Uh, my dad worked in the stockyards once upon a time and then uh, graduated to becoming a, a union member, which union has put food on our table all of our lives. So we we're fortunate to have my dad as the breadwinner in a very successful way that my mom didn't have to go out and work multiple jobs. We were able to do well. So it was not only the bread and the butter, 
a union job is the jam too. So we were able to have the braces and uh, you know nice holidays and things like that. So I, the daughter of Irish immigrants, my dad is a retired a local a 399 engineer. My brothers are also uh, engineers. And I also married a union member. He is a painter, uh, also an Irish guy. Uh, I couldn't find an American guy to walk down the aisle with, so I had to settle for somebody off the boat. But it wasn't for anything other than love because we're together 30 years if we can make it through this election cycle. Yes, I have three adult children, Brian, Fiona, and Claire. Um, they're somewhat supportive, although very critical of my race. And when I say critical, it's about what I'm wearing when I go out the door. Um, so I'm very happy to have them behind me as well. That's awesome. Yes, I can relate to that. I have three sons who have a lot to say about, uh, yeah, a lot to as say. As far about as sports, sports uh, I'm a big hockey fan, um, a baseball fan. I love the, both the Sox and the Cubs because truth be told, after five innings, after I've had my beer, my nachos, and my hot dog, I'm ready to go. That's hilarious. Okay. I love that. And how about your favorite Chicago food? Um, I definitely love Chicago's uh, Palermo Thin Crust Pizza from 95th Street. It's the best. Blue Melanati's is a close second for uh, a deep dish. So I guess it's safe to say pizza would be my favorite, but there's so many great choices in the city of Chicago to eat. Yeah. As I do is. like the thin. Is it really crispy, your thin place? It's like cracker. You have oh, to I ask like for it. thin and crispy. It's wonderful. And the sauce is lovely. It's really okay. good. I'm going to follow up with you after that because I'm, I'm going to, that's going to, that's worth a trip. Um, how about, have you been, have you participated in a lot of parades already this cycle? I would yeah, imagine um, yeah, the spring. Every day is running into the same dates like Groundhog Day, but specifically <laughs> I just did a, uh, a Memorial Day event with Senate President Don Herman and my slate mate Dan Pogazelski. So we were rocking it in River Forest. That was a fabulous turnout. And after that, I hopped over to Beverly. So those were the two most recent parades I've been involved with. But looking forward to more. We're doing the Pride this weekend. And uh, after that, of course, there's a ton of uh, Fourth of July events that, that are lined up. Okay. I know three of you were slated um, by the Cook County Democratic Party. Um, they are all fantastic candidates. I just got to interview you, but do you want to tell me a little bit about your slate mates um, who are on the ballot with you? Sure. We've been on this trail for over a year, and I'm really happy to say that we all get along like a house on fire. I think we're, we're the right team. We're the right fit. We have a good magic going. We're going to have Mariana Sparopoulos, who is the only incumbent and sitting commissioner of the MWRD, and she's going to bring stability and experience to the board because this board is really changing as Josina Morita is leaving to go to Cook County Board of Commissioners. And then I have my friend, she's in the far south land, Yumika Brown. She's actually a clerk out that way. And I don't know if you know this, but there is no representation on the board right now on MWRD board from the south land. So I'm from the southwest suburb of uh, Presswood and Yumika is in the village of Matson. So I'm happy to have representation as Yumika will tell you there's 5.2 million in Cook County and we're we're the missing piece on that board for representing about 2 million. And then the guy with the most energy or has the most energy for all of us and he doesn't even drink any coffee is Dan Pogazelski. He's running for the two-year spot. Um, Commissioner Deb Shore is now with the EPA and now he's going to be running for her two year seat, the remaining balance of that. So I'm very excited. We've all been endorsed, of course, by the party and the Chicago Federal of Labor and many unions up and down um, every trade imaginable. So I'm very excited to be standing with them. That's amazing. So there's actually four command, four people who were slated, mm -hmm. um, three for the three for the six year spot and one for the two. That's right. awesome. They are all wonderful candidates. And I do believe, I agree with you that we need geographical representation on the board just That's because right. it is a big county and the needs of the north side are different than the south as of the same with, you know, with the east and then the southwest. So um, others that are on the board, we Cam um, Davis is from, yep. is from Evanston. So there will be... Yep. And even though we are losing Josina and Deb, there will be representation from the far north side. Absolutely. Great coverage. 
I'm happy to say that most of, most of the uh, commissioners that we've met with are excited about all of us getting on board. So I think it's going to be a good team. That's exciting. That is awesome. Well, um, let's talk about your name because on the ballot, you are Patricia Teresa Flynn. And right. we, I have always called you Teresa, but you have a great yeah. ballot name, but let's talk about that with voters because they might identify more with the Patricia part or with the Teresa part, so. Yes, I know it's been confusing all along the trail and I blame my mother and father. Uh, my mom and dad, my mom's name is Patricia. They named me a Patricia Teresa Flynn, a Casey at birth. So I could have been on the bail, Patricia Teresa Casey Flynn, but I'm not one of those people. Um, so Patricia Teresa, I was uh, named as a child. I never used Patricia except with the IRS and the, the sorry, the Board of Elections. Everyone knows me as Teresa, but um, legally I have to appear on the ballot as Patricia Teresa Flynn, as that is my name. Okay, got it. I'm sure at the first day of school, teachers probably called you that and then you corrected yes. them. Yeah. Yes, I sure did. <laughs> I don't feel like I look like a Patricia, whatever a Patricia looks like. I feel like I'm Teresa. Okay, well, well it's a great name and people are going to find you on the ballot. Do you want to remind us of your punch number and also your website so people can go and find more information about you. You can find me on Flynn for MWRD on Facebook. My punch number is Flynn for MWRD, vote number 83. And also remember my slate mates, 81, 82, 83, and Dan's way down here at 89. Not too far, but he's on there with us. So thanks very much for having me. I appreciate it greatly. Now, thank you for joining us. And we wanna remind everybody to vote on Tuesday, uh, June 28th, and that early voting comes to the communities on June 13th um, to all 50 wards. And you can still get a vote by mail application if you go to the Chicago Board of Elections. Yes, and please go search down the ballot. The MWRD and those judicial candidates that have been working just as hard all year long are way down the ballot. So please keep searching your ballot, don't give up. Look for MWRD. It's a vital agency, important to the health and safety of our community and beyond. Thank you. Thank you.